<sighs> breathe guys it's all over that heart attack of a game ended you won you live to fight another day bad stuff in that game not great not perfect but bowling green just doing apparently what they do this year the last game they played was a similar type of game versus penn state they get the bye week they come to kyle field they're obviously not intimidated by the environment having just gone through it and almost winning in that kind of environment at penn state two weeks before and they showed it they had a really good offensive game plan uh, where they were able to kind of go on some st sustained drives. Couldn't really get a lot of explosives going, although they did have the 65-yarder to fan in one of the best tight ends in the country. But that was by way of a total busted coverage by a and where you had Will Lee and I think the linebacker was Scooby or just kind of guarding the same one yard by one yard square. They're like standing literally right on top of each other and the tight ends going past him. And then he made Ratcliffe look silly because he's just a really good player in the open field. But aside from that, it was a lot of just sustained drives where they either, you know, got a field goal or stalled out. They were able to stay alive and they had a good game plan and they came into Kyle Field unfazed, unbothered by the crowd. Quarterback was pretty poised. I, I don't think he's the most accurate. I don't think he's the most talented, but he was mature, took care of business. They just had a good game plan, man. They would do a lot of rollouts, getting people going sideline to sideline, not letting the D-line pin their ears back, go right after the quarterback, ran a bunch of screens in the game that worked really well, ran a bunch of play action, which was working against a and versus Florida, worked at times against us again today, and they stayed alive. But having said all that, you held them to 20 points, and I thought you would give up 17. So... The end result isn't terrible, but they did win the time of possession game, I think, by almost 10 minutes. No, they won it by 7 minutes. It was 33 to 26, something like that. So, not ideal defensively, but enough. We'll go back to it in a minute. My biggest negative takeaway from the game was just not capitalizing on red zone attempts. You're in there four times. I could think of a couple plays at the top of my head that could have been touchdowns. The Amari wheel should have scored there. You had this big, uh, another play, you had a big opportunity to Noah in the middle of the field that could have gone for like a 50-yard touchdown, but Marcel throws the ball behind Noah in the dirt, not there. Couple plays where Marcel was just missing guys, man. Um, not super proficient in progressing through his reads. Um, not super willing to look at the check down guy. In the first half, he was worse in this regard kind of more apt to just take off and start scrambling before letting things develop or giving his receivers a chance in the second half i did feel like he settled down quite a bit but i think you still stalled out a couple times in the second half four for four field goals one was really close good job brandy bond you hit them all though but you convert a couple of those this is not nearly the game that it was man you're much more comfortable they're not trying to get back in the game at the last minute it's a totally different game if you can convert in the red zone. you got to be able to do that. We talked about before the game, Marcel Reed had a chance to leave no doubt this game, kind of close the door on the quarterback race, and he was solid, took care of the ball, used his legs timely, showed, you know, potential again, but I don't think he slammed the door closed. I, I think there's still a world where we're, 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 we're waiting for the next performance to see if he takes that next step. Because obviously what we saw from Florida wasn't just all how it's going to be. Young quarterback, man. It, it's, it wasn't just going to be a lightning in a bottle thing. We found that out today and came back to earth a little bit at times. Although still a good player, still serviceable. You can still win games with him. I think it's still worth a conversation, but definitely worth monitoring right now. Connor wasn't even suited out. He was in street clothes. So... Is he further away than you think? Is he going to be back next game? I don't know. I don't know. It, it, him being in street clothes, to me, makes it feel like this is more of a couple of week thing than he can play versus Arkansas. But I think Reed can win a game versus Arkansas. We'll talk about that as this week goes on. Back to the defense. Gave up 20 points. You lost time of possession. I like that you got after the quarterback at times. Shamar Stewart had his solo sack this game. Shamar Turner had his solo sack. Before the game, I called for three solo sacks between Shamar's and Scorton. We got two of them. Scorton didn't get one. He was in the backfield a couple of times, but not getting home still. Good to see Stewart get home. Good to see Turner get home. 
you just gave up a lot in the secondary, I thought. I thought there was some soft coverage, probably often by design in that second half. But where the secondary to me really struggled was in run support today. I felt like there were a lot of times in the game where safeties were coming forward to make a play, but they were taking bad angles or over committing to angles and they weren't able to respond to cutbacks. And I felt like for whatever reason today, when the running backs would utilize a cutback, it would work really well against a and because I just felt like safeties and DBs were putting their heads down and not putting themselves in a flexible position to make plays. And I thought they were kind of getting tunnel vision in that regard. I'll have to rewatch the game, but that's how I felt about the secondary play, supporting the run. All, like I said, soft coverage, but some of that's by design. Some of that's keeping the plays in front of you down the stretch, milking clock, which you did a which you did a lot of on that last drive, that last long drive that ended with an interception by Marcus Radcliffe, his third of the year. Le'Veon Moss, you got to go down, man. Once you get the first down, the game's over. The game ends. You, there's no need to get greedy there. But I, I feel like Moss has been so solid this year. He'll probably learn from that. Be more aware of game situations. It's a tough lesson to learn. It could have been lethal, but you live to fight another day as is the whole mantra about this game coming out of it. Offensive line started the game bad in run blocking. Pass pro was fine the whole game. Reed had time the whole game. But run blocking was really bad for the first quarter. And I feel like if it wasn't, also could have been a different game. You probably could have had an opportunity not to stall out. I think you had like a three and out or two in the first quarter after that opening drive. Now O-line picked things up when you were when you kind of got close to halftime, and from then on they were blowing holes open. You still ended with like 230 yards rushing, and that's pretty good. Um, but you started slow there, so got to avoid that, especially against a veteran, well-coached team. Um, Would have been huge to have those opportunities in the first half because that first drive you were really just capitalizing on third and eights and fourth downs. It wasn't like that was a super effective or a super consistent drive. That was just Marcel Reed making things, finding guys on third down, making things happen. Found um, Watson. He found Barber, who played early and looked good early, but kind of didn't finish. Didn't see him much down the stretch for whatever reason. But you found Busty on that drive, which was nice to see. But you just didn't have early consistency running the ball, and this offense really needs that. So I look for the offensive line to start fast next game. I don't want to see that again. Now, receivers, hard to tell on the first view if they were getting open, but judging by how long Marcel held on to the ball at times, probably separation problems again, especially early in the game. But I did feel like Noah got open pretty consistently this game, didn't he? I felt like he was there. I felt like he was the safety valve, always the option there for, for um, Reed, and that's what you want to see in your veteran coming back, expected wide receiver one. Needed to have some moments like that. Still wasn't the best Noah we've seen before, but he was effective. Jade getting open twice on that second touchdown drive. That's the drive where I felt like Reed settled into the game, was more patient, trusted his receivers, trusted his eyes, trusted his feet, didn't kind of take off and get jittery, let the plays develop, and he found Jade twice on that drive, one for the big game, one for the touchdown. That was good to see. What else do we want to touch on? All the running backs still touch the ball. I think Amari is still a very effective backup. Obviously, that's all working out fine there. We're, there's no concerns about running backs. I don't know if you guys are concerned about the Moss thing going forward. I feel like this is a tough lesson for a young player to learn. But all right, guys, at this point, I'm kind of rambling. Going into Arkansas next week, guys. Let's talk about that for a second. Arkansas-Auburn today was pretty nasty. Now, Arkansas can definitely make you pay. And, of course, coming off that game, we're going to be worried about what the next steps are going to be because you just had a really close game with Bowling Green. And just looking at the scoreboard, that's going to make you feel uncomfortable. But keep in mind, this is what Bowling Green did to Penn State just two weeks ago. It's a really well-coached veteran team with some really good players. A&M left points on the table. A&M should have scored more points this game you got to fix that first and foremost. If you're able to find some stuff, if Reed can take the next step, I think he plays Arkansas, then you can find enough points to beat Arkansas. It's not going to be this huge monumental jump that some might think it is going from Bowling Green to Arkansas. I think Arkansas has their fair share of troubles, but we'll talk about them a lot this week. We'll have a few shows about Arkansas. You have time to get better. You have Missouri coming to College Station the next weekend. By then, You'll need to make sure you fixed as much as you can. I don't think it's all bad, guys. I don't think it's all bad. But I'll rewatch the game much closer. 
This was my emotional walking away from the TV at first glance breakdown, how I'm feeling right now, just a rambling video. So thanks for bearing with me. You got time to fix things. Even Missouri didn't look perfect, man. They almost lost to Vandy, almost lost to Boston College. You got chances to get better. So they better take them. All right, guys, I will see y'all Monday. I'll drop a more fleshed out breakdown after I've rewatched the game. I'll go live Monday night, give you guys a chance to call in. Gig them.